Hi everyone, this is Rebecca Keppel and I am here with my take on this week's Simon Says Stamp Monday challenge, which is to make a rainbow. I happen to have a rainbow of Distress Oxide inks and I'm really loving playing with these inks. So I also have a Simon Says Stamp background stamp, some smooth white cardstock, and the ink blending tool. And I'm gonna show you how I made this rainbow background following the stamp pattern. This is a cling stamp, so you see I took my foam out of of the misty and then I'm going to put my cardstock panel which is about four and a quarter by five and a half in the middle of the misty and I'm going to close the door with the stamp attached next I'm going to ink up my stamp with Versamark ink this is an embossing ink so it stays sticky for a longer period of time allowing you to place embossing powder on top and I'm really getting mostly in the middle of the stamp that's where it's going to stamp on the paper now I close the door again and I press down firmly on all parts of the stamp because I really want a good impression all over the cardstock next I'm going to take some hero arts white embossing powder and I'm going to pour it all over on top and you can start to see a bit of the design come through as the powder sticks to the Versamark ink I'm just going to tap off the background any excess powder and then my image is ready to heat emboss so I'm going to warm up my heat tool for as long as I possibly can that prevents warping when you bring the tool to the paper and I'm just going to go all around and heat set all of the image so this is going to melt the embossing powder and make it smooth and not look like powder anymore it's going to be a nice smooth white line now of course you can't see it yet because it is white on weight but I am going to use the Distress Oxide inks. I have a couple of ink blending tools and I keep the little foams on the bottom of the inks attached by some self-stick Velcro. So I'm gonna follow along the pattern of the stamp. I can see it even though it's hard to see in camera and I'm just going to use the ink blending tool in a circular motion around the pattern of the stamp and I'm gonna do this in a rainbow of colors so I'm gonna follow the Roy G Biv around the card and I only have four <laughs> blending tools so I'm gonna have to swap out the green and the blue and you can see that these inks they start to blend together really really well so even though I don't have a purple they do have the wilted violet but I don't happen to have that so when my pink and my blue is next to each other and I blend a little together, I do get some of that nice purple which completes my rainbow. So I'm just gonna continue to move around the card and use different colors so that everything is represented and I, I'm trying not to have anything next to each other. And that can be a little tricky as you start to move around. I didn't want two big pink spots next to each other. So that's why I'm trying to decide what's gonna go in the major areas of the card. And I'm gonna have at least three big pink spots, three green spots, that kind of thing, so that the eye moves around the card in a visual triangle motion. For the yellow and orange, I'm starting with the yellow in the center of these swirls, and then I'm using the orange on the outside, except for that one little spot in between the large pink areas. So here we go again with the blue, and this is so easy to do. These inks are so easy to blend. They're really, really creamy. I tend to have a lot of trouble with most inks and blending. It's just not my thing, or maybe I haven't practiced enough, but with these inks, it's super, super easy to do, and they do stay wet for a little bit longer. They have a pigment quality to them, even though they aren't straight up pigment ink, and so you can come back in and do some blending after the fact. So I came back into a couple little areas and just blended them out, and now what I'm doing is just taking my finger, which is clean, and running around the stamped image, and that's removing just a touch of the ink that's on top of the embossed image. I don't really want to go in with a baby wipe because that will pull up a lot of the color I just wanted to use my finger so now I have the Tim Holtz distress ink water sprayer and I'm just going to spray spritz some water on there and when you do that it's going to reactivate those inks 
So once I see that the water is spritzing all over the place and reactivating the inks, I come in with my heat tool and then you can start to see what they call kind of that oxidation process where some of the water is pulling up the color or bleaching it out almost. And it gives this really great artistic watercolor effect. Now I have the Avriel uh, hugs stamp and die set and I'm going to stamp again with Versamark ink on a little heart that I die cut from a lawn fawn heart and I'm going to stamp the sentiment at the top and it just says sending love and so I'm going to stamp that in the Versamark ink and I'm going to put the embossing powder on top again. I was struggling really getting good coverage so I did pour it on a couple of times, tapped off on the back and now I'm heat setting it once again. You can see how vibrant that is. Once it's cool then you can take like a dry cloth or even your finger and just remove that anti-static powder that I put on top first. So I trimmed off a little bit on the side so the width is less than four and a quarter. I'm taking my ThermoWeb Memory Runner XL and just adhering this panel that I've created down to a typical card front, card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And now I have my gray cardstock heart with the sentiment. I'm gonna put a little bit of foam tape on the back. I want it popped up, but not too much. And I'm going to lay that down. Now I have two pieces of cardstock, white cardstock, with the hugs die cut out, and I'm going to layer them on top of each other. Now I'm using the Ranger Multi-Medium Mat to adhere them together. That will, again, give them just a touch of dimension, not too much, but enough that you'll really be able to see this hug sentiment underneath the Sending Love and on the heart. So I'm going to really just fidget with this die until I get it. It's so delicate, it's absolutely beautiful, but until I get it really lined up, I'm just gonna slide it around a little bit. The great thing about the multimedia mat is that since it's a liquid adhesive, you have a little bit of time to slide it around and get it straight. So now I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna place this on the heart, and I'm going to place it right underneath like this, and you can see where that loop of the H is covering the sending. I am gonna cut that, so I'm not going to adhere it down. I'm just gonna adhere the middle of the word that actually lands on the heart. So it's like the U and the G for sure, a little bit of the lower H and the upper S. So now I'm gonna go in and just make sure that everything that's touching the heart does have some of the adhesive on it, except again for that loop on the H. Once this is dry, it only takes like a minute or so to really start to stick to the paper. I'm gonna come in with some really fine tip scissors and I'm gonna snip just a Above the stamped sentiment and just below the stamp sentiment then I'm going to come back in with my multimedia mat and adhere the rest of the loop of the H this way everything kind of goes together now I have the Nuvo crystal drops these are the jewel drops so they are more transparent than opaque and they dry dimensional as well I really love those and I'm gonna take the Ranger Multimedia Mat again, put a couple of drops on the card itself, and then adhere some pretty pink posh crystal droplets, which I absolutely love the dimension and shine from those as well. And there is my card. So this is my take on the Simon Says Stamp Rainbow Challenge. I hope that you liked seeing the Distress Oxide inks. I really love them and highly recommend them. Thanks so much for stopping by.